The story that is breaking tonight and developing happened on the Wednesday before the grand final. That is the Hawthorne racism drama as it has now become. Eight months later, remembering that this was going to be done by uh, the uh, Melbourne Cup weekend, then it was going to be done by Christmas, and tonight it has exploded further. Uh, Footy Classified has a number of stories to break tonight. Also tonight, the chief football writer of The Age, Jake Nile, has broken a massive story in relation to the chair of the Independent Commission. His words, we'll get to all of that, but all I can say, Damien, as I hand over to you for the moment, is that behind the scenes, the football world is in turmoil over this issue of fairness, of leaking, of strategic leaking and briefing of, of journalists and where this is all going and the unfairness of what it is to everybody in football at the moment. Welcome tonight. It's a huge story. Let's go. Yeah, look, the, the whole in the investigation into the Hawthorne racism situation has been a mess for some time, pretty much the, the entirety of that eight months, and it is now in a state of disarray. Yeah, there's layers to this problem which we'll wade through bit by bit tonight, and we'll start with an exclusive statement from Sonia Hood, the president of the North Melbourne Football Club, who has had this to say to us tonight about Alastair Clark. And I can't comment on any of this, but I will say that unlike almost everybody in this process, I have the advantage of having heard Clark go story. He sat in front of our board and our executive last year as part of our due diligence, which was part of him starting his employment. We needed to hear his story. It's a significant statement, Ed, and, and, and it's the pointing out the fact that eight months after the AFL appointed an independent panel to look into this, that he has still not had the right to have his side of the story told. He was also bypassed by the Hawthorne investigation itself. So he's a central figure in it, alongside Chris Fagan, who equally has yet to have his side of the story heard. And it's just one of these many layers of this mess that we're dealing with. Not to mention the original story, which got no quotes from either any of the people who were accused. Now, let's go through this. Uh, the contradictory evidence is mounting. Uh, you and I have both been working on this story that there is a, a, a cache of evidence from the Hawthorne Football Club that uh, I understand lawyers on behalf of the defendants, sorry, of the aggrieved, have been trying to stop being given to Clarkson, to Fagan and Burt, hmm. even before they sit down to mediation. And those people have said quite rightly, I believe, no, we want to see all the evidence before we even mediate. Yep or decide what we're going to do. Is that is that a fair yeah, comment? Yeah, it is. And those documents relate to, to, to medical records of the players. They relate to mental health records of some players in, in question, I, and, I believe. And timelines as and well. And timelines is crucially. Now, there's also other sets of documents here that have been the focus of legal manoeuvring during the course of the past week and a half that relate to the timeline of events around the Hawthorne Football Club's own dealings internally prior to going to the AFL with this information, as it did before the story broke on Wednesday of grand final week last year and and where that plays out and how that looks it it's just that yet again another layer of the complexity of this which is delaying the entire operations can i just ask do demo yeah. so originally it was going to be within a month yes and then october 4 when the panel was first announced it would be by christmas yep. now it's been eight months yep. and ed you just touched on leaks everything that's going so when it takes this long leaks are going to happen so can you yep. explain What's the going on behind the scenes now to get each side of the story to come yeah. out? And this is why we get to this stage tonight, where e even Ed, the, yeah. uh, as you said, Jake Nile Lodi, um, the, the chief writer of the age, uh, ha has spoken to the head of the independent panel. We'll take a look at that now. Yeah. Um, Bernard Quinn, QC, has issued this statement to the age, and this in itself is extraordinary. To, 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 to some people, this may be the panel attempting to, to validate its own operations. This is part of it we're highlighting, Ed. Um, the panel is not see the request to be interviewed from any previous Hawthorne Football Club coach participating in the investigation and was informed at an early stage that those participants did not wish to be interviewed before they had received relevant documents and had an opportunity to consider them in the preparation of written statements responding to any allegations against them. There's a, a whole lot more detail in that particular statement published in the Age tonight. But that underlines what we were saying and have been uh, working on, that there is this whole cache of, of evidence that has been blocked by, I believe, Leon's wire, yep. uh, who is acting for the, the players. And they're saying, no, no, we're not going to go to a mediation until we see all the evidence. Mm. So we've Correct. got a situation at the moment where Stop, mate. allegations have been made and now people are stopping the evidence that actually could get to a conclusion. So it's becoming a lawyer's picnic compared to what it was originally supposed to be, and it was a search for the truth. Yes. Not a version of the truth, not my truth, 
mm. the truth. Damo, off, off the back of what Ed's saying and, and mediation, which a lot of people are just picking up articles as we are, uh, some pre-mediation demands. Uh, obviously, that was referenced in, in one paper regarding the 18 demands. Obviously, Fagan has come out and made a statement off the back of that. Yeah, he has. And he, he's denied this on the weekend. And this was uh, the, the start of, of the public frustrations that are now airing pretty much by the hour um, with some of these parties involved. And there's the 18 claims that, that were published in the Herald Sun, denied by Fagan and, and in that statement. And again, Again denied tonight in the statement in the actual age um, from the head of the independent yeah. panel itself. So there's now two denials about those demands, Jimmy, being placed. But clearly, the, the, those demands are, are being driven by the, the, the body representing the players. So group. off the back of this, Chris Fagan put out what I thought was a, an amazing statement on the weekend. Alistair Clarkson was asked about it after the North Melbourne game. But as you can see there, he's come in and said, among other things, the article suggests that a lawyer for very complainants in the Hawthorne investigation, Leon Zwire, has put in place that in demands to me, Alistair Clarkson and Jason Bird as a condition of a potential mediation. No such demands have ever been communicated to me or my lawyers. Mm. So what's happening now, as I said, these are becoming strategic links yep. to get a result. And the search for the truth has now become a bit cloudy. It's, it's, what, what was said to me by a senior person involved in this tonight was, quote, the only positive is that it proves their independence of the independence because no one, mm. no one knew that uh, Bernard uh, Quinn QC was going to release any statement tonight. So, so the no article, one the article has had no line of sight on that yeah. statement being made. So, so the, the panel it formed is now making public statements without its knowledge. He's issued his own press release to The Age. Mm. Not unto Jake Noel, by the way, but it's quite incredible. Yeah. Didn't tell anyone who was doing this. It was another senior person involved in this. So it's uh, it's quite incredible. Okay, mate, can it, I just quickly cutting through all this for yeah. everyone, all yep. the legalities and everything that's going on after eight months? At the start, we all they were stood down, Clarkson yes. and Fagan, and yep. a lot thought they'd never coach a game of AFL footy again. What well, they they have been. Who at the end of it all, at this as you sit here right now, is in the most trouble? Is it Hawthorne, the coaches, or? Could it be that nothing is to come of it all? Well, Eddie, uh, uh, Lordy, you know my views on this. I, I, I still feel no matter what happens for me, Hawthorne Football Club will be sanctioned and sanctioned hard. Now, now, how that looks, let's see it play out. I say that because it was their investigation which ultimately started this whole process. That They, as a football club, did not give the rights to Alastair Clarkson and Chris Fagan to have a right of reply. Now, at the very outset of all of this, and, and this was always countered with what we say, these allegations are very serious and, and, and need to be heard properly in a proper forum. But when we We've got the situation tonight where Bernard Quinn is, is publicly attempting to justify why there has been an incredible delay on it. You can just tell, and, and it just goes to the, the so, state of disarray this is in. So, Damien, one of the questions, and partly to answer what you asked yeah. just then, Matthew, is if we get to all this and they have to back out, the AFL has to back out, or say the evidence doesn't stack up, can they do that in the world we're living in at the moment? Is it, is it something they can do? When everyone starts to talk about media, because this started off, Alistair Clarkson and Chris Fagan were gone, sacked, they were stood down. Can there be any chance for them now to get to mediation without admitting some fault? I mean, if they believe they're totally innocent, they can't go to mediation, they have to go to court. Now, they probably will because they were asked, quote, to rise above it, and they have so far. But it's only so much, and yeah. I think Chris Fagan's comments over the weekend showed yeah. that again. Yeah, look, I've never attempted to, to get to the end of the game, and, and, and the allegations are serious, and, and they do need a proper hearing. They haven't had it at this yeah. stage. What to, we will say, though, what I will say, is both Chris Fagan and Alastair Clarkson have adhered to the, the process in, in ways that others haven't in recent times, and, and that's a credit to them to this point. It doesn't mean they're innocent of what's been no. alleged, but they haven't yet had their... But we'd like to say. actually think that there is now a search for the truth, not a blocking process process hmm. of the documents that need to come out. I think if you make the allegations, you have to know that this is where it's going to go. I just want to say, it started with a strategic leak, this story. We've had strategic briefing now over the weekend, and now an independent committee chairman has briefed journos as well. Unfortunately, yeah, that's is... happened in most situations, big investigations in the yeah. AFL. It's, that seems to be what happens. It's gone on for eight months. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You know. OK, all right, let's leave it there for the moment because we'll be coming back to that story. Um, it's really hard for all, everyone, the, the complainants, the defendants and even now the people involved in the whole situation. It's, it's a huge mess. But